rings an alarm bell for humanity and a road map to crucial policy resets needed in a world that is burning up faster than our capacity for recovery. Excellencies, I'm sure all of you must have heard about the catastrophic floods in Pakistan which impacted 33 million people the size of three European countries, more than half are women and children. Despite seven times the average of extreme rain in the south, we struggled on as raging torrents from our melting glaciers in the north ripped out over 8,000 kilometers of metal roads, damaged more than 3,000 kilometers of railway track, and washed away standing crop on 4 million acres, and ravaged all the four nook and corners of Pakistan. An estimate of damage and loss has exceeded $30 billion. And this all happened despite our very low carbon footprints. And yet we became a victim of something with which we had nothing to do. And of course, it was a man-made disaster. Mr. President, the priorities of Pakistan have never been clearer. First, the global goal on adaptation needs to be prioritized, both in terms of financing and timelines. We are yet to see the promised half and half balance in adaptation and mitigation finance. The current financing gap is too high to sustain any real recovery needs of those on the front lines of climate catastrophe. Second, loss and damage needs to be part of the core agenda of COP27 to meet the pressing humanitarian needs of those that are trapped in a crisis of public financing fueled by debt and yet have to fund climate disasters on their own. This is simply unjust and unfair, to say the least. Third, Mr. President, climate finance must be clearly defined as new additional and sustained resources with a transparent mechanism that meets the needs of developing and vulnerable countries with the speed and scale that is required. There should now be total clarity on what actually counts as climate transfer and what counts as development finance. For instance, as they often overlap, Excellencies, we have been take, talking for years, but have failed to even agree on the basics. Pledges made at the Copenhagen COP15 in 2009 for mobilizing $100 billion per annum by 2020 have still not been realized. They need to be enhanced given the increased frequency and intensity of climate extreme events. Fourth, a global climate risk index of all parties of the UNFCCC must be created under the auspices of the UN system. Projects from the most vulnerable countries on this index must get prioritized and speedy approvals for climate finance. 
And finally, mitigation ambition needs to be revived in a clear burden share formula. The promise of common but differentiated responsibilities must be respected as we race towards a much higher trajectory of warming than defined in the Paris Agreement. Pakistan's 2030 ambition in the indices are already higher than many countries, but we understand our responsibilities as we move towards a net zero plan once we recover. Excellencies, unless there is a transformational shift in the flow of capacities, finance and technology that reverses the pyramid of climate capital, the bargain between the North and the South will not work. I want to share something with you. While we were grappling and fighting against this torrential floods which hit Pakistan very severely, we had to import wheat, palm oil, and of course, very expensive oil and gas, spending around about 30, 32 billion dollars to finance its import. On the other, we have repurposed, redirected our meager resources to meet the basic needs of millions of households affected by these devastating floods. We had to dish out about $316 million through a program by the name of Benazir Income Support Program to provide an amount of $113 per household to about 3 million households in flood-affected areas. And now winter is setting in and we need to provide shelter, homes, medical treatment and food package to these millions of people in different provinces of Pakistan, for which we are spending billions of rupees from our own meager resources. Now imagine, ladies and gentlemen, on one hand, we have to cater for our food security for the common man by spending billions of dollars and on the other, we have to spend billions of dollars to protect flood-affected people from further miseries and difficulties. How on earth can one expect from us that we will undertake this gigantic task on our own? Of course, we are thankful to international community for helping us in this difficult time coming to our rescue through donations and through stuff which have been shipped through air freight and of course through sea routes. But the gap is humongous. The gap is widening by the day. Therefore, it is the duty and responsibility of Global North to understand our difficulties and our plight. We wouldn't want that tomorrow, God forbid, some other country should become a victim of this climate-induced disaster, and I call it man-made disaster. 
it is extremely important that if we have to fight and rebuild and repair our infrastructure which is which has to be resilient and adaptive then of course we can only do through additional funding not through additional loans and debts because this would be a financial death trap i hope this conference will not only listen to this message loud and clear but convey this to all who have the power and financial muscle to change the course of history loud and clear and that is what this conference is meant for ladies and gentlemen it is now or never for us there is indeed no planet b i thank you for your patience god bless you thank you your excellency وزیر اعظم شہباز شریف شرم الشیخ میں عالمی ماحولیاتی کانفرنس سے خطاب کر رہے تھے وزیر اعظم شہباز شریف نے کہا کہ پاکستان میں سیلاب سے تین کروڑ سے زائد افراد متاثر ہوئے